Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at BT14 and BT14 offers us lots of new and powerful tools to be able to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be a new iteration and update to the new Monzimon deck. So new Monzimon is just basically a Numamon and Monzimon deck as it was trying to form in RB01. So as far as the strategy of the deck goes, with all of the new updates, uh, the deck is more trying to focus on a swarm-based strategy. So it's trying to play out its level 4s and its 5s as efficiently as it possibly can, and use those to go as wide as it possibly can, and try to rush the opponent down with that wide field. The level 6 in the deck are more there just to support uh, the level 4s and the level 5s to keep the pressure on as best as it possibly can, while also potentially acting as a little bit of extra removal to deal with some problematic threats. The biggest weakness to the deck is the fact that a lot of the Digimon just aren't very strong so you could just be walled out of the game and uh, the lack of overall damage output isn't necessarily helping the deck either especially if the opponent has a good enough of a defensive field or board presence to be able to deal with what you're presenting the opponent with. But if you could look past the deck's flaws, it could still be a pretty fun and rewarding deck to play around with even if it isn't going to be the most competitive. So going on to the actual deck profile, let's start off with the Digitamas. So I'm going to be running four copies of the EX for Sunamon and one copy of the BT6 Pagumon, mostly just to try to help us draw cards as best as we possibly can. You could flip-flop these if you really wanted to in terms of the ratios, and you don't even have to run five Digitamas if you don't want to. I just like utilizing Sunamon a little bit more because I'm not actually trying to Digivolve into my level fours. I'm going to be hard playing them more often often than not, and I want my level 3s to stick around, and Sunamon rewards me for doing that with a card draw for other Digimon at Digivolving, versus Pagumon needing to be deleted to potentially try to draw a card. Next, on to the level 3s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Dorumon. So this is the uh, security rookie promo Dorumon, and uh, we're still running him just because of the factor that he has that nice security ability to potentially play Digimon off the top of our deck to be able to help us uh, get going in a pinch. So uh, this is really good because we already know it combos with Shin Manzimon from RB01 to be able to put him back into our security, so that way we have some reusability on his security ability while also being a consistent rookie because uh, he will add himself into our hand so that way we could use in our raising area right away when it's checked. Next I'm going to be running two copies of uh, Chumon. So Chumon is just one of the decks dedicated floodgates to turn off the opponent's ability to gain memory outside of anything but their tamer to try to slow them down as best as we possibly can. While I'm also going to be running two copies of Chikurimon to do something very similar except uh, players can't reduce the play cost of their cards so that way they're going to have to pay full price for them and this doesn't necessarily affect us as much just because when we're going to be hard playing some of our higher stage Digimon, we're going to be gaining memory instead of reducing the play cost, so that way we have a way to dodge this while the opponent might not. And then the last rookie of the deck to kind of round out the rookie lineup is going to be four copies of the promo Ukamon. So as I kind of already stated with the eggs, we're not really going to be trying to Digivolve, so Ukamon rewards us for actually utilizing our rookies a little bit more aggressively to try to cycle through our raising area as best as we possibly can while also providing us with some extra tempo, just because when one of our Digimon moves from the raising or breeding area to the battle area, we get a hatchet egg and be able to gain a memory. This works with itself, so it could set up our next rookie right away. Next, on to the level 4s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Jerrymon. So Jerrymon is also going to be treated as a Numamon, so that way we could use him with all of our Numamon name-based synergies. Then he also has a really good on-play ability to help us try to cycle through our deck, where we're going to be discarding a card with the Numamon in its name to be able to draw two cards, which is really good, so that way we have alternative ways to be able to draw cards while being able to set up a really cheap level 4. 
Next, I'm going to be running four copies of the RB01 at Numamon. So this is another pretty decent card uh, where he has a nice on-delete ability that's going to be acting as a searching or digging tool to be able to add a Monzimon uh, and a Numamon card from among the top three into our hand. So that way when he dies, he's going to be a nice consistency tool to make sure we could get whatever we need set up. While he also has an inheritable ability for our higher stages to take advantage of, where during the opponent's turn, as long as it's a Numamon or a Monzimon named Digimon, it'll gain the blocker ability, so we even have some defensive lines of play we could try to set up. And then that same type of sentiment is why we're also going to be running four copies of the BT-14 Numamon, just because it also has that inheritable ability of blocker. This works with any Digimon, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a Numamon or a Monzimon if you want to tech in an alternative level 6. But regardless, uh, this is still just a very decent card for the deck because it's going to be helping set up our main tamer, whether we're playing it or Digivolving into it. It doesn't matter just because we get to place uh, one Satsuki from our hand to to the bottom of this Digimon's Digivolution source, and uh, one of our Digimon gains Rush for the turn, so that way we could uh, make some really aggressive play lines. And then the last uh, champion of the deck is going to be one copy of the OG BT2 Numamon. So this is just in the deck because, well, it's another Numamon name. We don't necessarily care about anything else about the card, but it's also just another pretty cheap level 4 for us to hard play, similarly to all of the other Numamons. Next, on to the level 5s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of the RB01 Monzimon. So this has some pretty decent usability, just because it has an on-play ability to be able to place a Numamon from our trash to the bottom of its Digivolutions to be able to gain 2 memory, effectively costing 5 versus 7 if we need to hard play the card. But uh, whether we're hard playing it or Digivolving into it, it doesn't matter, we still get the secondary ability to be able to have one of the opponent's Digimon get minus 3000 DP and minus security attack 1 for the turn to try to make their Digimon a little bit weaker or potentially remove them. And then this card's also going to be really important to try to help with the overall damage output of the deck because its inheritable ability states that while this Digimon is a Numamon or a Monzimon, then it's going to be gaining security attack plus one, so we could try to deal as much damage as best as we possibly can. And that same type of sentiment is why I'm also going to be running four copies of the brand new Monzimon from BT14, just because it has that same inheritable ability to be able to give security attack plus one to our higher stage Numamon or Monzimons. Then this Digimon doesn't necessarily have any when Digivolving abilities, but it does come with the nifty armor purge for some extra protection in case this Digimon does end up getting deleted. Then it's going to basically revert to whatever was put under him while also having an on play ability to to be able to potentially put whatever we want underneath him because we get to place a card with Numamon in its name from our trash to the bottom of this Digimon's Digivolution source and be able to gain two memory, again effectively costing five versus seven while setting up its Arbor Purge ability. And then the last ultimate of the deck is going to be two copies of Black King Numamon. So Black King Numamon does have Numamon in its name, so we could use this with the BT-14 uh, Armor Purge Monzimon as a potential card to shove underneath it, and it's going to reward us for doing it because it has the Inheritable Ability of Blocker, so that way we could use that with Armor Purge to have a Digimon tank the hit, the Digivolve itself basically into the Black King Numamon, and be able to still have a body left over to be able to do various different things with. Then he has a nice on delete ability, so that way we could try to be aggressive with this card, where it's going to be acting as a pretty decent consistency in setup tool, allowing us to reveal the top three cards of our deck, and then we get to add a card with Monzimon in its name from among them into our hand, and then be able to play a Numamon in its name for free, which this is really cool because it could replace itself uh, while adding cards into our hand, and it could even replace itself with something uh, stronger just because it's only caring about Numamon in its name so if we hit another black king numamon off of this ability or even platinum numamon off of this ability then we get to play those cards for free giving our numamons extra value 
And speaking of uh, Platinum Numamon, onto the level sixes, I'm going to be running two copies of Platinum Numamon. So Platinum Numamon, whether we're digivolving it or it's being played from our hand or off of our deck, off of an ability or something, it's still just a solid card having lots of usability because we get to trash one card with Numamon in its name from our hand to be able to gain two memory. So off of that Black King Numamon play, it could potentially play the Platinum and then the Platinum will allow us to be able to gain that memory so that way we could replace itself with a stronger body and gain some extra tempo that way while it also has a nice on delete ability in of itself where we get to play a level 5 or lower Digimon with Numamon or Monzimon in its name from our hand for free so that way we have all of the extra ways to be able to utilize all of the on play abilities of our Digimon a little bit more efficiently. Unfortunately for this card, it is a little bit on the weaker side when it comes to stat lines, but that's kind of why I'm running three copies of Shin Manzimon to be able to make up that difference because it has some pretty decent stats while being a really strong card that's actually acting as the removal backbone for the deck. So it has a nice wind digivolving ability where we get to place uh, all level three Digimon uh, face down to the top of the owner's security stack, which we already know we could break some of ours and it doesn't matter if we're losing our rookies just because the recovery is going to be really, really nice, especially since we have security abilities we could potentially trigger over and over again. Then it also has a secondary part to this ability where then all of the opponent's level four or higher Digimon get minus 3000 DP and gain security tech minus one until the end of their turn to potentially remove some of their weaker Digimon or uh, be able to uh, stave off some extra damage just because of that security attack minus one. Then it also has a nice when attacking ability acting as even more good removal where it allows us to trash a Digimon with a Numimon in its name from its Digivolution source to be able to throw one of the opponent's uh, Digimon face down to the bottom of their security stack having one of the best forms of removal in the game that there's not a whole lot of protection against. And then, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of space for level 7s, so I'm not going to be running any, but if I were to run a level 7, then I'd run Death Exmon, just because it's one of the easiest level 7s for any deck to use. But as far as the Tamers go, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Satsuki. So Satsuki is going to be the main tamer of the deck just because she has direct Numamon and Manzimon synergy because uh, she has that Mind Link ability where we get to uh, place her underneath one of our Numamon or Manzimon named Digimon as the bottom Digivolution source. So we could gain access to the Inheritable ability, where uh, if the Digimon has Numamon or Manzimon in its name, it's going to be gaining the Jamming and Reboot ability, which we already have good instances of uh, Blocker and to Security Attack Plus, so we could try to swing with our Digimon as aggressively as we possibly can, knowing they're going to be safe because of Jamming, and then Reboot will allow us to stand them back up so they could potentially become Blockers as well. Then she also has the End of All Turns ability to be able to to separate Satsuki from the Digivolution source so that way we can pick and choose on how we want to utilize our Satsuki. Then on top of that she also helps with the overall memory generation of the deck by allowing us to gain a memory at the start of our main phase if the opponent has a, a Digimon on the field so that way uh, we could potentially split her apart at the end of our turn or the opponent's turn to have access at this memory generation. And then the last tamer of the deck is kind of another tech or flex spot, and it could be really whatever tamer you feel like you want to use, but I'm going to be using it for two copies of TK, just because it's a really good memory fixing tamer that also is acting as a good consistency tool, allowing us to look at our security and be able to grab any card from among it into our hand, and if that card just so happens to be yellow, which a lot of our important Digimon are yellow or are part yellow, then we get to recover one, essentially replacing what Ever we're taking. And then when it comes to the option lineup, we don't really have a whole lot of space for options, so I'm just going to be keeping it simple at running some removal and some extra utility. So the removal card is going to be Heaven's Judgment. It doesn't have to be Heaven's Judgment. I just like this because we are potentially playing with three different colors. White for the Ukamon, yellow for the Manzimon, and black for the Numamon. But the fact that it rewards us for each of those colors because of its main ability, we get to activate uh, for each color we 
have of minus 6,000 means that we could potentially remove very large bodies through DP reduction. And it's even good out of security because its security ability just is a flat minus 12,000, which still could be pretty impactful. Then I'm also going to be running uh, two copies of uh, Cootie's Kick. So Cootie's Kick uh, reduces itself by one as long as we have a Black Tamer in play, which we should because Satsuki is our main Tamer and we have good ways at trying to get her out. Then on top of that, uh, the utility part of the card is allowing our Numemon named Digimon to gain the ability of the fact that it can't be blocked. And it also has an on-delete ability where we get to gain three memory. So that way it allows us to try to deal damage a little little bit more consistently while also potentially uh, gaining extra memory when our Digimon gets deleted because a lot of our lower level Digimon have relatively low DP. So we could use that extra memory to do various different things with because a lot of our uh, cards have some pretty efficient costs to them. Then it's also pretty decent out of security, allowing us to try to play a black Digimon that costs three or less for free, which all of our level four or below do have a play cost of three or less. But that's pretty much it for the deck, and uh, the deck has some pretty decent uh, usability and uh, flexibility when it comes to some of the different options and ratios that you're going to be playing with. So we do have a whole bunch of other useful cards to think about based on uh, the type of build that you're going for, and uh, what you have access to and want to play with, and are expecting out of the current meta. And the cool thing about this deck is the fact that we also do know that we're even going to be getting some more future support out of BT15 with the Monzimon and Numemon X, while also a new Jerrymon as well. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.